Citra MMJ is no longer the king. Now this UI is similar to Yuzu Emulator Android. As you guys can see, we are almost getting 100 FPS while emulating 3DS games on official Citra Android. Yo, what's up guys, it's Atrix here. The biggest update of Citra Emulator Android has just released and it has big changes such as ability to now use custom GPU drivers to increase performance, fix graphical issues, a brand new UI similar to that of Yuzu Emulator Android, many bug fixes and performance improvements. We'll be checking out the global Vulkan implementation and in today's video, we'll be setting up this new Citra Emulator Android. We'll be trying out its best settings, adding a custom GPU driver and trying to emulate some 3DS games. So before starting, if you guys are new here, smash that like button, subscribe, turn on all notification. Let's start with the minimum requirements. Snapdragon 450 processor or above, 2 to 3 GB of RAM, Android version 8 or above. These are the official minimum requirements. With that being said, let's begin. Alright guys, as you might know, Citra Emulator is an completely open source Nintendo 3DS simulator for Android and on its official GitHub page, if you check out the actions tab, the build which we'll be checking out is the Android UI overhaul part 1. It is the build number 328 which was released yesterday. Before trying out this build, you'll have to make sure to uninstall the previous build of official Citra Android. Then only you can try it out on your Android devices. The developers of official Citra Android have made this build public on their GitHub page. Anyways, let's start by setting up the Citra Emulator Android Universal version. Now Citra Android is known as Citra Universal Android and as you guys can see, you will see an welcome screen similar to what you see when you are setting up the Yuzu Emulator Android. So we'll just skip the notification permission and also skip the other permissions then select the user folder. We'll just go ahead and choose the Citra Emulator folder. Afterwards tap on OK. Afterwards, we will have to select the folder where you have kept your games. Afterwards, we just have to tap on the next button. Then it will say, setup has been completed. Click on continue to get started. Once you are done setting up Citra Universal Android, you will get an game list UI similar to this. Now, if we just go ahead and check out the bottom section, you will see the games search as well as settings icon. Now this UI is similar to Yuzu Emulator Android because the team Citra developers were the one who started Project Yuzu and both of these emulators as you know were later on released for Android devices. So let's start off by going into advanced settings and here you'll be able to see our normal Citra Emulator Android UI. General, make sure to turn off limit speed percentage. Let's go to graphics now. This is the most important section where we'll be able to find that graphics API by default has been now set to Vulkan. Now previously official Citra Android UI to use OpenGL ES performance for users but if you want to use Vulkan API make sure that your Android device is you need Android version 10 or above and Vulkan API is supposed to run really well on devices with Mali GPU for example MediaTek Exynos or Kirin processors in which the game usually lags make sure to enable SPIR with shader generation afterwards make sure to enable asynchronous shader compilation internal resolution you have to set it according to your device as my device which I am using is OnePlus 11 it's pretty high end device I set the internal resolution to 4x Linear filtering, make sure to turn off this option as it might decrease your performance. Accurate multiplication also disable this option. Make sure to enable disk shader catch. There are no other settings which you need to change. In audio, you can see audio stretching, make sure to turn it off. Afterwards, in terms of debug options, you get CPU JIT, hardware shader, vSync. Now make sure to disable vSync, make sure to enable the first two options. Afterwards, we get debug renderer, we won't be turning it on as it might affect our performance. Now let's just go ahead and scroll down to GPU driver manager. As I mentioned before, now you can finally use custom GPU drivers in Citra emulator. For today's video, we'll be using the Mesa Turnip Adreno driver revision 9. Now note the custom GPU driver option will only work for devices with Adreno GPU. So if you have an Mali GPU Android device, you won't get this option, I guess. Only works with Adreno 6 series or 7 series GPUs. Once that has been done, let's scroll down and here you'll get the system option. Inside systems, you get a new option to boot home menu. Now, unfortunately, when you just go ahead and tap on start, it doesn't work, but it is something to look forward to. In the future of Citra Emulator Android, just like my cage, it may be able to boot into a 3DS home menu. That's pretty cool, I guess. But once everything is done, uh, we can just head back and try out a game. So right here, I have loaded Pokemon Omega Ruby. Let's just go ahead and open it and see how well will it actually work on my Android device after the Citra Universal update. I'll just go ahead and tap on don't allow and tap on ok. Afterwards we can just press back and here you'll be able to uh, change a little bit of settings like enabling show FPS option. And at the top left corner you'll be able to see we are getting more than 200 FPS. Now many of you guys ask me how do I get the last screen layout. So I'm just going to show you guys just press back afterwards select 
landscape screen layout make sure to choose the default screen and you'll get an last screen layout with that being said our game is about to begin there we go pokemon omega ruby i'll just go ahead and tap on the start button the amount of fps which we are getting is really impressive we are getting more than 90 fps that's very playable experience if you want to emulate pokemon omega ruby or any 3ds game in general but that's because i have a good device Many of you guys who don't have a great device will also be able to get a playable gameplay experience. I'm sure of it because Citra Emulator has been improved and optimized so much. Uh, and I also believe that OpenGL graphics API should provide you less graphical issues if you are facing any. I used to see a lot of graphical issues but now even with Vulkan API we aren't seeing any issues whatsoever. That's a huge step towards stable 3ds emulation on Android. And Team Citra has done a fabulous job on Yuzu emulator as well. Yuzu Android is getting along pretty well as you might have seen from my last videos graphical issues in major games like Pokemon Legends Arceus has been finally fixed. Anyways, the FPS which we are getting is really amazing, we'll need to set the clock. Let's leave the house and see how much FPS do we get in the outside world scenarios. As you guys can see at the top left corner, we are getting more than 90 FPS while emulating 3DS games on the official Citra Android which is even better than Citra MMG Android. Anyways, that's going to be it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, turn on all notifications. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.